Welcome to Growing in His Word, man. God bless you guys. Good morning. Listen, Paul was on a mission, and Paul was Paul was on fire because Paul never, ever stopped loving Christ because he knew the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, God is in love with you this morning, and He wants you to know that no matter what you're going through, whatever season you're going through, you got to keep pressing on, man. And that's what Paul did. Paul pressed on towards the high prize, Jesus Christ. And that's what us believers need to do is press on no matter what kind of storms come our way. Listen, we're only here for one time, man. <laughs> we're here a limited time offer. And life is life. And Jesus is everything. He's eternal. He's powerful. And guess what? He's the Holy Spirit. We're in the book of Acts, man. Chapter 23, man. And, we're, and Paul, the mob, is, is out to get him. You know, they, they, they've got their spears, their horses. The Jews are mad. They're angry. He's in Israel now. They told him not to go to Israel. Everyone said, Paul, Paul, don't go to Israel. Now, remember, they kissed his neck. And, they, and the, the, the apostles, they, were, they, and they kissed his neck before he, let, he sailed out to Jerusalem. And they warned him that it wasn't going to be easy. But see, what, what happened was, is later in chapter 24 and 25... You're going to see Paul stand before the king and Agrippa, and he's going to tell him straight out, listen, man, God stopped me when I was on the road to Damascus. He's going to plea again, and he's going to tell him that God freed me and that he was going to set me free from whatever people who kind of per try to persecute me. So Paul was already destined, and Paul was ready to fulfill the gospel just like we believers need to fulfill his plan in our life. Father, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you for this morning service, Father, this podcast. What a great podcast. We're able, Lord, to get on the airways to share your love and your mercy. Father, we thank you for this day, and we just ask that you glorify this, uh, uh, this, out, this half hour, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. You know, Paul got out of a lot of trouble because he had Roman citizenship, that he acquired when he was younger. But the fact is, he didn't stop what God had planned for him in his life because he loved Jesus Christ and he was ready to die for the gospel. Listen, we're living in a day, man. Today's the time where we believers need to tell others how much Jesus loves them. The book of Acts is radical because it explains how much love Christ has for us and how much mercy he, he desires for us. Listen to this, man. God is in love with you this morning. And you may ask yourself, why? Well, he made you for a reason. Paul was working for Jesus. He, he wrote one third of the Bible. He, he was ready to go. And, and he's, we're in chapter 23 of Acts. And now they're, you know, they're, he gave his message to the Sanhedrin the Jewish council, and now they're divided, and now Paul is, is standing up and saying, look, I was just like you guys, man. You guys are hypocrites. Paul was a Pharisee. He was a, a king of the Pharisees. He would even go to cities, countries, to persecute believers. Why? Because I, I, I figured it out, man. All the, all, you know, people persecute because they are hurting inside. They want... Christ so bad they don't know how to ask and get it they are they don't know this is why some of them are just put there to to just mess it up that's in the bible too but you can see the plot against Paul in verse 11 it says but the following night the Lord stood by him and said be of good cheer Paul for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem so you must also bear witness in Rome Wow. You know, as a believer, I really believe that as Paul was a Pharisee, I really believe at the same time Paul was used by God, so powerful, but he got a taste of his own medicine, so to speak. You may think, what's that mean? He was brutal. He was nasty. He was mean. But he was converted. Paul was converted and he was telling people about his testimony. That's all he kept doing was telling believers 
about his testimony. But they didn't want to hear the voice. The men basically didn't want to understand Paul. And they didn't want to understand that calling in the name of the Lord Jesus is the only way. They didn't want to hear that, some, some people. So he went to the Gentiles. The Jews didn't want to hear it at that time. You may think, oh, well, they still don't want to hear it. That's not true. That's not true. Let's not pick on, the, on, on Jews. Paul stood, man, for Jesus Christ. Listen, this is what I'm talking about this morning. Are you going to stand for Jesus Christ? Are you ready to stand? Are you ready to stand against the, 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 the good, the bad? in the evil? Are you ready to say, no, I don't want to do that. No, I'm not going to cheat on that. I'm not going to take from there and put over there. I'm not going to compromise. Are you willing to say, I don't want to compromise anymore? Are you really, or honestly, I mean, it's, it's that simple. Paul is doing this. He's saying, I don't want to be persecuting anybody for their faith anymore. I don't want to do it. Paul did that. But there's something in a lot of believers don't understand. Paul trusted in the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit, not by man. And Paul was warned by his friends not to go to Jerusalem. Listen, Paul may have, have, have Paul may have begun to doubt his decision, but the Lord encouraged Paul not to be afraid because he was under the sovereign care of God. Because as Paul had borne witness to Jesus as a prisoner in Jerusalem, remember that. So he would do so so he would do as a prisoner in Rome, Paul's chains would glorify God in a way that would have been impossible without them. Listen. It's amazing. You know, we're in Acts chapter 23, verse 22 we left off. We're going to start on 21 where it talks about it says in chapter in verse 20, and he said the Jews have agreed to ask that you bring Paul down to the council tomorrow. As though they were going to inquire more fully about him. But verse 21 says, But do not yield to them, for more than 40 of them lie and wait for him. Men who have bound themselves by the oath that they would never eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they're already waiting for the promise for you. Listen, they want to kill him. They're not going to eat food until they kill Paul. <laughs> so the commander let the young man depart and commanded him tell no one that you have revealed these things to me listen he's going to be sent to feel felix now listen to this verse 23 says and he called for two centurions saying prepare 200 soldiers 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen to go to caesar caesarea at the third hour of the night and provide mounts to set paul on and bring him safely to felix the governor he wrote a letter in the following manner. Now listen to this. Every Roman soldier that was a commander had to write a letter. And this is the letter that he wrote towards Paul. They were going to assassinate him. And he's like, no, I'm not going to let a Roman soldier, I mean a Roman uh, citizen get assassinated. <laughs> so what did God did? God used the Roman soldier to save Paul, the ex-Pharisee, so that they don't assassinate him. Listen, do you feel like you're being assassinated? Well, that's kind of heavy, pa Pastor Yopes. No, your character. You see, people think that they can't be assassinated, their character, but they're doing it all the time now, especially with this technology. Someone says something about you because they don't like you, and they, they, sn they snake behind your back, and they talk behind your back and they go to your church and they whisper behind your back and they hurt your feelings and you know your feelings lead you astray right the bible says that we don't depend on our feelings because god's word never returns void listen this is what they're doing to them don't you i mean if you if you've ever been through that you'll you'll know what paul's kind of going through only assassination can take shapes of many forms this is what they're doing Persecution. Believers, listen. It's out there. First they befriend you, you know, and then they're, you know, you got to listen to this. Because I, I prayed and I said, Lord, give me, the, give me your words today, Father. Let me decrease as you increase. And God told me this. God told me, listen, Paul was going through it. 
But as believers, we have to understand one thing. The Holy Spirit is guiding us, but we have to understand that no matter what we go through, we can't allow people to assassinate our character. How's that even equate into this chapter? It's simple. Paul was going to be physically assassinated, but right now you may be going through a spiritual assassination. Satan is trying to devour your family, play on your emotions, condemn you. Romans 9 says, and Romans 8 says, therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Listen, don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let him set you up. He's, he's, he's cunning. Listen, he st- it started in the, with Adam and Eve. Listen, it started in the garden. Here, eat some of this fruit. And God's like, don't do that. And then they felt naked. Why were they naked? Because they felt convicted. Because when we sin, we feel convicted. God convicts us to repent and get over and get on with it and to move on. Satan is, will try to assassinate your character and lie on you. He does it all day long. So he can separate you from your friends, separate you from your job, separate you, isolate you, solitary confinement, then drill your mind, tell you that you're no good, tell you that you have no future, tell you that you're just a nobody. Listen, don't do that to yourself. God says he loves you and he has a plan for you. Listen, and he called for those two centurions. They're ready to go get them. This is what the letter states. And the, and the, Romans, the Roman soldier said, listen, he said, in the letter it said, Claudius Lysias, to the most excellent governor, Felix, greetings. And here was the letter regarding Paul. And it said, to the most excellent governor, Felix, greeting. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. Coming with the troops, I rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman. And when I wanted to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before their council. I found out that he was accused concerning questions of their law. You see, here's the proof that Paul existed. Believers, listen, it's all here in the Bible. Let's read it very slow. But had nothing charged against him deserving of death or chains. And when it was told me that the Jews lay in wait for the man, I sent him immediately to you. And also I commanded his accusers to state before you the charges against him. Farewell. <laughs> They hated Christ so bad that they wanted to kill him because he represented Christ. Listen, people are not out to kill you. Some people don't like Christ. They see the love of Christ in you and they say, I don't want that because they want to choose the booze. They want to choose the sin. They want to choose the lifestyle that they want to choose. They don't want to come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ can cleanse them. You see, Paul was led by the Holy Spirit. Paul was used because of his dirty past. Because everybody has a dirty past. But not everybody wants to come clean with their dirty past and say, I'm done with that. Nobody wants to, not all, but some people don't want to repent. Paul is saying, listen, repent. Jesus Christ loves you. And he's going to give his testimony again. Listen. Verse 31 says, Then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night. Okay? To to Antipatris. Now the next day they left the horsemen to go on with him and returned to the barracks. And when they came to Caesarea and had delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. And when the governor had read it, he asked, what province is he from? And when he understood that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will hear you when your accusers also have come. Wow, interesting. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's praetorium. Now listen to this. The governor, Antonius Felix, he governed Judea from AD 52 to 60, and Felix had been a slave, but had gained the status of freedom under the Emperor Claudius. 
Now, because uh, Felix's brother was a friend of the empire, emperor, Felix's political clear basically blossomed, blossomed up. So even though he was not popular among his peers, Felix was known for indulging in every kind of lust and, and basically, you know, the writer, uh, Tactius, described him as exercising the powers of, of the king with the character of a slave. He was from Sicilia. Now listen to this. After reading the letter from Jerusalem, Felix wanted to know Paul's home province because when he learned he was from Sicilia, he decided to hear the case because of the political status of Sicilia. He, oh, he wanted to, you know, you know, he was his fame, whatever. But it did not require his his natives to be sent back, uh, sent back there for trial. So this is what it says on that part of it. But here's what I want to tell you as believers. Are you ready for this? People don't like you because you love Jesus. People aren't going to like you because Jesus is in you. People are not going to want to eat with you because Jesus is in you. Some people, you've got to brush them off. Listen to me. You've got to brush them off. I get emails every single week. Listen, believers, Jesus Christ used a man named Paul, Saul. And there's a city in Israel called Saul in Jerusalem. Not many people know this. When you enter into Jerusalem, look to your right side. I drove by there. I drive by there all the time. They named a city after him. Oh, really? Yeah, go look it up. Believers understand that Paul loved Jesus Christ so much that he didn't care what people thought about him. And he knew that God had a plan for him. Paul's going to get ready to go to did the defense before Felix, but he's now he's in Herod's Praetorium. So now, now, basically, it's the residence built by Herod the Great. Okay? It has prison cells in there. Listen, Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. Listen to what I got to tell you. God put this on my heart. Simon, listen, if you go to John chapter 18, listen to this. And Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. The same praetorium, whatever, that they put Paul in is what they put Peter in. Listen. And Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. Now that disciple is known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to her, who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl, who kept the door, said to Peter, you are not, alone. You are not, you are not also one of these men disciples, are you? Remember that? Verse 18 says, Now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coal stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. And the high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. And Jesus answered and said, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where the Jews always met. In secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me. And I said to them, Listen to this. Ask to me what I said to them, and indeed, they know what I said. Listen to this. Verse 22 says, And when he had said these things, one of the officers stood by and struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do, do, you, answer, do you answer the high priest like that? And Jesus answered, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Ananus, then, then Ananus sent him bound him to Caiaphas, the high priest. Listen to this. And Peter, verse 25, now Simon Peter stood and warned, warmed himself. Therefore they said to him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? And he denied it and said, I am not. Jesus said, if you deny, if you deny me in he, uh, public, I'll deny you in heaven in front of my father. One of the servants of the high priest, relative of him, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? And Peter then denied him again, immediately. The rooster crowed. Listen. Listen to this. Listen to this. 
Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. And it was early morning, but they themselves did not go into the Praetorium, lest they should be defiled, but they might eat, that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, what accusations do you bring against this man? They locked him up and they answered and said to him, if he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. The Praetorium, they locked him up in the Praetorium. Listen, this is the same one that they put Paul in. And this is the same one that they locked him up in. Listen. We have to stand for Jesus. Paul did it. Peter did it in the end. John did it. Luke did it. Mark did it. We must bear witness to the truth. The truth was the seal of God. And we need to understand this question has been always brought up. But we as believers must understand no matter what we go through, we got to continue in the faith. We cannot listen to man. We have to listen to what God says. Otherwise, man will destroy whatever you're doing. We have to be led by the Holy Spirit. The soldiers mocked Jesus. They laughed at him. They spit on him. They scourged him. They twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put on him a purple robe and they told him, Hail to the king of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. But Pilate went, but, 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 but Pilate then went out again and he said to them, Behold, I'm bringing him out to you that you may not find any fault in him. No, they wanted to kill him like they wanted to kill Paul. It isn't Jesus. It isn't you they want to kill. It's Jesus Christ in you. Don't take it personal. Turn your cheek. Smile and walk away. Don't be afraid to share Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to say, I want to serve Christ. I want to go into the most darkest, utter, nasty parts of the world. Because Jesus Christ will be there for you. He'll be with you. Things happen for a reason. Things happen for a reason, for a season, so God can move you like a chess pawn to another location so he can serve you, so you can be served, or he can serve through you in a better place. Listen to me, I'm telling you, trials, tribulations, things that come into your life, that bend your life, that make you uncomfortable are God's way of saying, good morning, you ready to go serve me? <laughs> Listen, man, you may think, oh, this guy's crazy. No, it's true. You need to understand that whatever go you're going through, it's because God has a plan for you. He allows us to go through things because he has our life already in front of us. He already knows how many hairs are on your head. I'm not going to verse, 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 verse this morning and read Bible verses. I'm just going to speak from my heart or the Lord's heart, not mine, because my heart's wicked, the Bible says. Yeah, it does. Our hearts are wicked. So let me, let's the Holy Spirit work. Holy Spirit work right now in your name, Jesus. Listen to this. Jesus Christ wants to move you to where you don't want to go. But when you go, things are going to open up and people are going to say, wow, what an amazing time we're having. And God's going to open areas in your life. What you never thought could be open, he's going to use for his glory. How's that possible? It's possible. You think Paul wanted to get his face beat? You think he wanted to be beheaded? They're going to cut his head off. Yeah, in case you don't know this. <laughs> I didn't want to spoil the, the end of the story. <laughs> but they behead him. John was cooked in oil before he escaped to the island of Patmos. And then God used him to write the book of Revelation. Not with an S. Revelations. I'll get phone calls for that. Persecution's going to happen. Peter was, Peter was hung upside down on a cross. But he went to heaven. We need to keep going. No matter what it is, we need to serve Jesus. Wow, I don't know if I want to serve God, man. That's kind of heavy, bro. I'm kind of comfortable right here where I'm in my big house and my big pool and my... Come on, boy. Got everything I need here. No, listen. Jesus is saying... Stop forgetting about the simplicity of others. Serve others. Help others. Help them out, man. If you got something that they don't, help them. Share. 
You're not going to take it with you when you pass on and be with the Lord. Listen, help them. Help them. God helps those who cannot help themselves. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, oh, God helps those who can't, you know, God helps those who can't help, you know, who help themselves. He says, God helps those who cannot help themselves. Listen, Jesus Christ is in love with you. He wants you to understand that there's a way out. Whatever you're going through, you don't have to, t- you don't have to worry anymore. Just submit to him. Say, look, I'm done with it. I can't please my wife. I can't please my husband. I can't please anybody anymore. Lord Jesus, all I can do is please you. Paul took a beating before me. Peter took a beating before me. B- believers took beatings before me. And now I'm free. I can do whatever Christ wants me to do. Philippians, Philippians, the book of Philippians, read it, please. You know, we can do all things in, in Christ who strengthens us. We can, we really can. The question is, do we want to? We have the Holy Spirit. Stephen was stoned to death. Man, we got it made. Paul was getting beat down. He didn't care. He was getting, he knew he was going to die. But he was at peace. That's what Jesus gives us. Peace that surpasses all understandings. When we understand how much he loves us, that's when we can love others. Listen, it's hard to love others. I get it. Look, I get it. It's hard to turn the cheek. I, I've done it for 25 years. I've showed mercy to somebody. And 25 years I've showed mercy to this certain person. 25 years, can you imagine? Mercy, mercy, mercy. But God will allow us to go through certain things in life to work on our own character. And listen, this is how he works it. He knows us. He bends us like taffy. And Paul was being bent. But Paul knew what he was going to get. He knew that that the book of Acts was supposed to go forward. He knew that in the future, this book would be here for us to continue in the faith. And that's why I do what Christ in me does. For his glory, not mine. Listen, I'm just a man. We're just people. Turn the news on. People are, are going all day car accidents, bus accidents, you name it. But God is saying, look, I want to use you. I want to build up something strong because he loves us. Everybody has to stand before God. Everybody. No matter what you think, do, or say, we all got to stand before Jesus Christ and give account of what we've done on this earth. Wow, really? Yeah. I'd be repenting right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner too. I'm not just saying that because, oh, I'm preaching about it. We're, hey man, I'm human. What do you want me to lie to you? Okay, I'm a perfect guy here. Yeah. No, God wants you to come boldly before the throne and get on your knees and repent and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. I can't do it anymore. I can't please my wife. I can't please people. But I can serve you, Father and serve the ones who don't know you, and I can show you the mercy that you showed me. I can show you the mercy that you showed Paul. I can show you the grace that you showed me. This is what it's about. Grace, mercy, grace, mercy. Father, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you for growing in his word that you're showing the grace of mercy on the podcast. Lord, you're awesome. Lord Jesus, what a radical chapter today, Father. How Paul was arrested, how he was tried, but yet your word still went forward, Father. Isn't it amazing, Lord? You're amazing, Father. Lord, you're so amazing that we're able to stand here and pray today. Father, I thank you for that. And I thank you for the believers that are all around the world listening to this podcast. And Lord Jesus, we pray right now 
for uh, Pakistan that you keep providing Bibles to the pastors that keep emailing me, Father. Lord, provide, provide the Bibles, Lord. Provide them, Father. Lord, we know you'll make a way, Father, because everybody on the airways is praying right now. We thank you, Jesus. We ask that you continue to bless everybody, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Listen, next week we're going to chapter 24, man. (laughs) I'm excited. Listen, you don't got to worry, man, because, you know, Paul's going to get accused again, and then he's going to have the defense before Felix. You know, and eventually Paul's going to have to appeal before Caesar and Agrippa and talk about his early life and then basically recount his conversion, man. And (laughs) we're going to have fun with that, bro. God bless you guys. And may God bless growing in his word, man. God bless you guys.